there are two types of statistical inference that we're going to look at in this class. So the first one that we already looked at is confidence intervals. The confidence intervals are used when we're interested in estimating the value of a population parameter. So when we're interested in estimating the value of um, our population mean, for example. The other one is the test of significance, um, commonly referred to as a hypothesis test. And a hypothesis test is used when we're interested in um, a claim being made about a population parameter. And so we get a random sample, and we collect some data, and we look at the evidence provided by uh, that data. Okay, so let me give you an example of that. So suppose I tell you that I'm a 75% free throw shooter. I can make 75% of the free throws that I shoot. So you challenge me to go over to the field house and make 20 free throws. So I step up to the free throw line and sadly, I only make eight of them. So you stand there and watch, you're tallying those up and you go, aha, I knew you weren't a 75% free throw shooter. So why, why was that eight free throws not good enough for you? So what you're doing when you are assessing that claim and watching you make those free throws is that you're asking yourself, what am I expecting if this is true? If she's really a 75% free throw shooter, okay, and we did this experiment with 20 free throws, and maybe we repeated it over and over again, do I really expect to only see eight free throws? And the answer to that is probably not. You'd probably expect to see quite a few more. Okay. And we can actually quantify this. Okay. We can put a number to it. It turns out the probability that if I really was a 75% free throw shooter and I only made 8 out of the 20, the probability of that happening is actually only 0.09%, which is astronomically low. Okay. So odds are I'm probably lying about that, right? And it's true. I'm not a 75% free throw shooter. Okay, so that's kind of what a hypothesis test does. So let's look at the first uh, thing that we really need in a hypothesis test, which is what are the, what is the hypothesis? What are our hypotheses that we're going to be testing? Okay, a hypothesis is a statement that something is true. So we have two hypotheses that we're going to look at. The null hypothesis is kind of the status quo. It's a claim being made often by an authority um, or a company. So suppose um, I'm looking at light bulbs and the company says the light bulb lasts an average of 700 hours. Okay, that would be my null hypothesis. Okay, and my null hypothesis is written with H with a little zero down, um, kind of, it's a subscript. Okay, so that's the notation saying that this is the null hypothesis. And then what you write as the hypothesis is that mu is equal to something, okay? So you're saying my population parameter, in this case, my population mean is equal to, we we'll use the light bulb example, I would say mu is equal to the 700 um, hours, okay? And what we're doing in a hypothesis test is we're looking for evidence against the null, okay? So if you think about um, the null hypothesis being, um, I don't know, uh, the government, the big evil corporations or something like that. Okay, we're, we're looking for evidence against them. All right, um, to borrow some sort of political science colloquialism here. The alternative hypothesis, though, is what we really think is going on. Okay, so do we think that it's less than what they claim? Do we think it's greater than? Or do we just think that it's different than what they claim? So in other words, if we're in second grade, that's the liar, liar, pants on fire argument, okay? I don't think it's 700. I don't know if it's more or less, but I just don't think it's 700. Okay, would be a would be um, different than, okay, or not equal to. So we have three symbols that you can use um, in an alternative one. So H with a capital letter A is the symbol that we would or how we would denote that this is our alternative hypothesis. And again, you need to make sure that you have your population parameter written here. So mu. And then you're either going to use um, a less than, a greater than, or a not equal to. So you need that symbol. And then this number is always the same as this number here. So once you've written down the number that you're going to use for your null hypothesis, it's going to be the same number that you're going to use in your alternative hypothesis. Okay, so that'll stay the same the whole way um, through both of those hypotheses. So let's look at your classwork. On the bottom of page one and the top of page two, you have a couple of hypotheses to write. So let's look at this first one together. 
A dog food company claims that its special diet mix will allow Labrador retrievers to live to a mean age of 15 years. It's significantly longer than the overall mean longevity for the breed. The consumer group says that this claim is overstated and that the actual average is less than the company's claim. So our symbol for the null is H with a little zero, and the symbol for the alternative is H with an A. And we are using the mean here, so I'll make sure I put a mean symbol for each one. And the null is always mu is equal to. Okay, so the company claims that the dogs live to be an average of 15 years. So that would make that my null hypothesis, so mu is 15. And if my mu is 15, that means I'm going to use 15 here for the alternative hypothesis as well. All right, and then um, the consumer group says that the actual average is less than the company's claim. So in other words, mu is less than 15. So that gives me my two hypotheses right there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do numbers two and three, but you're certainly welcome to. If you want to pause the video and try them on your own, you're certainly welcome to. Uh, but you will get more practice on these when we do the full hypothesis test. All right, the FDA claims that the amount of vitamin C in tablets produced by a company is less than the advertised 500 milligrams. So again, I'm going to put my H0 and my HA. And I know that I use a mu, my symbol for the population mean for both of those. So I just write that down. Okay, so the company claims that it's 500 milligrams. So I'll put my null is mu is equal to 500, and I'll put a 500 for the alternative as well. It's always the same number for both of these. And then I just need to decide what symbol to use here. So the FDA claims that this is less than the advertised 500, so there we go. That's just going to be a less than. All right, and then on to number three. So the uh, board of a major credit card company requires the mean wait time for customers for service calls is three minutes. To make sure the mean wait time is not exceeding the requirement, um, an assignment manager tracks the wait times of 45 randomly selected calls. All right, so a little trickier wording there, but that's okay, we've got this. So I put my HO and my HA. I'm going to identify which uh, hypothesis is which. And we're still doing these population means, and we're using our mu. Okay, so the company claims that the mean wait time is three minutes. So mu is equal to three, and I know that the alternative also is going to use a three. So now I just need the symbol here. Okay, so they want to make sure that the mean wait time is not exceeding the requirement. So I'm going to use a greater than symbol here. All right, um, I hope you were able to follow along with that okay. Um, come back and we'll talk a little bit more about um, hypotheses and uh, one-tail and two-tail tests, and then we're going to get into hypothesis testing.